Your leg doing all right, Miles? Yeah, I mean, all right. Did you have to go? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to stick it out the way it is. You know, Tough it out. Just keep uh, doing physical therapy <laughs> and try to get as much as I can out of it. Yeah. I ain't going to be more sorry. <laughs> Please rise. I will do the pledge first. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Donnie, would you lead us in prayer, please? Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for another day you gave us, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you just be with us, Lord, and be with us as we make our decisions here betterment of the county, Lord. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. 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 All right. <coughs> the treasurer is supposed to call in sometime tonight. Everybody hears? There we go. Is that better? Hello? Yeah. It's not ringing in your phone. Well, well, hear me call. I'm calling. Tell her to hang up. I'm she, calling. He's going to call you. Mm -hmm. Anybody in here from Mountain Telephone? <laughs> John, no. Oh, there you go. Okay, here you go. <laughs> nah, it's just, for some reason, when I'm connected to Wi Fi, it won't let me call out. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm trying to call our treasurer. She's not in. She's going to call in and give her a report tonight. Hello? Ah, you there? Uh, yes. All right, I'm going to just hold on. We're getting ready to get started here. And uh, we've already done the prayer and the stuff. I'm going to go ahead and do the... Minutes. So let's go ahead and look at the minutes, and I'll entertain a motion on approving the minutes from the last meeting. As soon as you get ready. There's one thing that we missed on tonight's meeting that was to be tabled over until tonight. That was uh, the renaming of Gopi Coffee Road to mm -hmm. Ball Lane. We got it here that said this action was tabled until the next meeting. 
We put that on the agenda. Do you mind? Too late now. Too late now. Yeah. Make a note of that and make sure it gets on the agenda next month. Anything else? I make a motion that we approve the minutes from the last meeting. I'll second. Motion on the floor, properly second to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, any further discussion, changes, amendments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, moving along, sheriff's uh, office vehicle purchase. Uh, sheriff asked me, he's going to be here tonight, so he asked me to read this and uh, talk to you about it. Uh, basically, after being notified of the extreme delay of receiving a vehicle through Sourcewell, the Sheriff's Office has purchased a vehicle with financing through uh, the Morgan County Physical Court and CACO. The county will be a pass-through agency for the Sheriff's Office to purchase a 2023 Dodge Charger. A loan check in the amount of $36,429 has been received by the county to purchase the vehicle. Morgan County Physical Court will pay the monthly lease payments for the approved loan schedule. The Morgan County Physical Court will be reimbursed monthly by the Sheriff's Office for each monthly P&I payment submitted until the lease is paid in full. So that's basically that vehicle that he's originally doing source well. It was going to take source well much longer to get it here than he could. And he found a uh, vehicle uh, at one of the dealerships and they cut him a deal. So that money's just, we're just acting as a pastor. He, he's already got it and he'll make payments through us. Yep, if they want to that. yep, there's an attachment on there. And they're looking at it. <laughs> Any other questions? I'll entertain a motion to... To entertain a motion for approval to pay Dan Cummins of Paris $36,429 for the purchase of a 2023 Dodge Charger for the Sheriff's Office and approval for the Morgan County Physical Court to pay the monthly lease payments on the approved loan schedule and to be reimbursed monthly by the Sheriff's Office for each monthly p &I payment submitted until the lease is paid in full. I'll make a motion with what you said. Yeah, it was a mouthful, huh? <laughs> no, second. All right. All right, we have a motion on the floor. It's been properly seconded. Uh, approval to pay Dan Cummins of Paris $36,429 for the purchase of a 2023 Dodge Charger for the Sheriff's Office. Approval for the Morgan County Fiscal Court to pay the monthly lease payments on the approved loan schedule and to be reimbursed monthly by the Morgan County Sheriff's Office for each monthly p and payment submitted until the lease is paid in full. Is there any other questions or there may none. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Again, Sheriff's Office. Uh, Morgan County Physical, uh, uh, the Morgan County Sheriff's Office has declared a 2013 Dodge Charger as surplus property and would like to advertise for a bid. Uh, they're asking uh, for approval from the sheriff, approval for the Sheriff's Office to advertise a 2013 Dodge Charger as surplus property for the bid. That's the one that got in the accident, right? Yes. Yeah, that was the one they got in the accident. So they need to get rid of it. So it was. I'll make a motion that the advertiser give the permission to advertise for the bid. I'll second. Motion on the floor has been properly seconded uh, for approval of the Sheriff's Office to advertise the 2013 Dodge Charger as surplus property for the bid. Any further questions or discussion? There being none, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Road department truck. Where's that road foreman at tonight? <laughs> uh, rationale. 
The previous approval to purchase a road department truck through Sourcewell has been extremely delayed after receiving this information. After receiving this information and the urgent need for a truck at the road department, we feel that we need to advertise for a bid. So they're asking uh, the court to approve to advertise the bid for the attached specs to purchase a truck for the road department. If you look at the attached specs, before what they asked for was basically a pickup for them to drive around for the foreman to use. <coughs> uh, in further discussion on that, I think it would be better if they got a truck rather than something just that they drove they around in use. that has multiple use purpose. And this will do that. They can put a salt box on it. They can do the rest of the stuff. And that way we can get work out of it and just not a cruise vehicle. And... No, there's not. There should have been no attachment. Hmm. I thought there was going to be an attachment. It should have had the. Uh... Well, anyway, that's what's. All right. Yeah, I want you to see those specs because it's it's a different truck, it's a bigger truck, and plus they put the salt box on the back and they do they put a snow plow on it, and that way he can <laughs> go straight to work with it when just having something to drive around the roads, looking at roads. Uh, the specs will call for a three-quarter ton uh, truck instead of a uh, half-ton truck. Say that again. Uh, the bid specs that uh, we would like to get approval to advertise for bid uh, would be a three-quarter ton truck instead of the uh, half-ton truck, a um, club cab, a four-wheel drive, automatic transmission, a gasoline engine, V8, uh, with uh, the work truck package and also the towing package uh, with AC and uh, I pretty much think everything else would be standard on a lot of those but the main thing is the, the difference in the truck uh, would be from the three quarter from the half a ton to the three quarter ton truck that could be used for a multi-purpose truck uh, for the road department. Was it specified long wheelbase or a short wheelbase? You hear that? Uh, it'd, be a short, it'd be a short wheelbase, six and a half, six and a half uh, feet. Bed. It'd be a short wheelbase, uh, four wheel drive, uh, like I said, V8 gasoline engine, automatic transmission, uh, three quarter ton, work truck package with a towing package as well. Now, the roads foreman did ask for an electric truck, but I told him no. It's <laughs> <laughs> an inside joke, don't worry. <laughs> Vicky went over to get the uh, specs, but is there, is there any more specs on that? Other than that? Uh, that's pretty much it. We kind of wanted to uh, specify maybe possibly the color, um, maybe either a, like a white or a silver truck. Um, It'd be totally up to you all if you want to include that in the bid specs. Um, I think the road foreman kind of wanted to have like a white truck. That way it would kind of go with the fleet that's up there. Yeah, I mean, I don't like the silver trucks because on a foggy day, well, those things kind of blend right in. Yeah, well, he, he would prefer white. Yeah. Uh, that way it would go with the rest of them, and uh, we can get the decals on that. But um, that'd be totally left up to what you all decide to do. Well, she she didn't know them off the top of her head. So. Yeah, I, I yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't have the paper, but I pretty much knew what we was what they were looking for. So those are the specs. Uh, uh, so we'll entertain a motion if uh, you guys can even include the color in there in that motion if you want to. I'll make a motion we advertise the bids for the three quarter ton truck. Why? <laughs> All right, we have a motion on the floor. It's been properly second to approve to advertise for the bid uh, of the specs that were presented by the treasurer to purchase a white three quarter ton truck for the road department. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
Motion carries. All right, treasurer, you're on deck with the, your treasurer's uh, periodic checklist. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me uh, well enough. Uh, is, uh, can loud. everyone hear me okay? Yeah, okay. You're, you're good. I got you on the okay. mic. There may be some background noise here, but uh, I'll try my best to be as clear as possible with you guys. Uh, the first thing is 8A. We have the treasurer's periodic checklist. Uh, this is something that we will uh, always present to the court every uh, month. If you all want to open up that attachment. Uh, this is the uh, checklist for October. This includes um, the retirement report, Kentucky sales tax report, Kentucky tax payroll payment, the 15th and the 30th, uh, payroll one and two garnishments, 457 deferred comp, 401k deferred comp, uh, the processing of the payroll three, um, and there's a 457 deferred comp on the end of the month payroll, our bond payments, sales tax, restaurant tax, and the self-paid insurance. Uh, this monthly report will also include quarterly reports and payments due. Uh, we done the city tax, the county tax, the federal form 941s, the unemployment reports, and the quarterly financial statements to DLG. We just uh, wanted to um, give that as an informational uh, report to the court to show that that has been uh, process paid and done on a timely basis. Okay, that was for so, information only. And yes. uh, now let's move on to the financial statement. Okay, uh, this is the financial statement. Of course, we have those attachments for you all over on the uh, side. The first one is the uh, reconciled October 1 through October 31st, uh, 2023. Uh, financial statement, if you will notice that the uh, cash balance on the books and the bank match in the general fund, there is $1,138,195.15. Road fund, $1,881,001.06. Jail fund, $112,804.38. LGEA seven thousand three hundred and twenty two dollars and seventy three cents. That'll be a minus two thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars and eighty four cents. Uh, that balance is due to the Timberland tax invoice that we received and that was needed process for payment. Uh, the next November financial statement will show that we have received our fire acres tax that will go into the uh, forest fire revenue account and that will show that that uh, new account balance for that. Uh, the next one will be special projects. Special projects, 190,000, 18635. Uh, clerk dock fees, $12,610.57. Uh, public properties funds, $410,371.78. A uh, total across all funds, three thousand or three million seven hundred forty nine thousand six hundred seventy one dollars and eighteen cents. And I have also attached an revenue condition report and an appropriation condition report that makes up that total financial statement. Those are quite lengthy, but they show in detail the makeup of the financial statement. And we'll just need approval on the state financial statement. I entertain a motion when after you've done your review. Make a motion to approve the financial statement. I'll second. We have a motion on the floor. It's been properly second to approve the financial statement. Any further uh, discussion or questions? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next up, uh, changes to the cha uh, chart of accounts. Okay, this is the uh, changes to the budgeted chart of accounts. I uh, have included an attachment on there for you guys to look at. Um, if we make any changes to the budgeted chart of accounts, we of course always want to let the court know there's always something that we may need to change um, or to uh, create a new account for some uh, funds that are going through the county. 
Um, the first one is the sales and use tax. That is just a change on the expense account. It was previously listed as the Wellness Center Sales and Use Tax Account Code. Uh, all we did was just change the name. We took off Wellness Center and just now labeling it as a general sales and use tax code. And that will be used to pay all county sales and use tax uh, where we had the, uh, the surplus property auction. You know, we had to pay the sales tax in on that, and we used that code to take care of that. That'll just be a change. It's nothing new added. Uh, we also added uh, the Bicentennial Celebration account. That's an expense account. It's new. That will be used for the Bicentennial Celebration uh, county contribution. Uh, the next one has to do, well, the next actual uh, four have to do with the purchase uh, and lease of the sheriff's office uh, vehicle. The first one is the sheriff's office vehicle purchase, which is new, which uh, that line item will be used to actually purchase the vehicle from the dealership. Uh, the next one is the uh, sheriff's vehicle lease payment principal. That is the line item that we will use uh, to pay our pay the monthly lease payment for the principal toward the principal balance. Uh, the next one is the sheriff's vehicle lease payment interest. Of course, that will be used to pay the monthly lease payment for the interest. Uh, the next one is the sheriff's vehicle lease payment reimbursement. That is a revenue account. Uh, we created that account to the budget because the sheriff's office will be uh, reimbursing the county where we are the pass through uh, for those monthly payments. And we needed to create that to get that put into the budget and on our books. And the last one is the tourism grant account code. That is an expense. It is new, but actually we had received um, that earlier on in the year, and it was in the fiscal year 22-23, uh, in actually 2023, but that is for our tourism grant expense account, and we also wanted to, uh, to add that to this, to this budgeted chart of accounts, but we will just need approval uh, on that report. When you're ready, I'll entertain a motion to approve the changes to the budget and chart of accounts. I'll make a motion we approve the changes. I'll second. Motion on the floor, properly second to approve the changes to the budget and chart of accounts. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to the second reading of the fiscal year 2024 budget amendment number three. Okay, this is the uh, second reading of fiscal year 2024 budget amendment number three, totaling $164,681.78. Uh, of course, you know, that is the second uh, reading. We had already submitted uh, approval of the first reading to DLG. If you all want to open that up, that uh, tells everything there in detail, and we'll just need approval of the second reading of that. Hello? Uh, we're, we're still looking. Okay, I'm sorry. I you're, thought I lost you. No, you're still there. <laughs> just, making, just making sure. I'll make a motion. Approve the second reading of fiscal year of 24, budget amendment number three. Second. We have a motion on the floor. It's been properly second to approve the second reading of the fiscal year 2024 budget amendment number three, totaling $164,681.78. Any further questions or discussion? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving along to the emergency budget amendment number four. Uh, this is an emergency uh, budget amendment uh, number four. Uh, we uh, qualify for an emergency budget amendment uh, due to the purchasing and leasing of the sheriff's vehicle for the charger. Um, we will need to do this amendment in order to put it into uh, 
to amend the budget to make that purchase. Uh, it is for $36,429. As you can see, um, that shows that revenue coming in for borrowed money. That shows that the uh, lease was done from CACO. It's coming into uh, the budget, and then we created the appropriation line item for the Sheriff's Office vehicle purchase, which will be paid out to Dan Cummins for uh, the $36,429. And we will submit this to DLG as well. But we will just need uh, approval for that. So no motion that we approve the emergency amendment number four. I'll second it. Motion on the floor has been properly seconded to approve emergency amendment number four. Any questions or discussion? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving along to fiscal year budget transfer number five. Okay, this is a budget transfer number uh, five. Uh, if you all want to open that up. We um, had some budget transfers. Uh, you can see, first off, uh, the uh, surplus property auction uh, was the $1,650 that was collected for the water district. And, of course, that would need to be paid out uh, to the Morgan County Water District uh, sur uh, surplus property. Uh, that's included in this budget transfer. Uh, we had transferred some money out of the coroner call assist line item, um, $1,182.65. And that went into the uh, coroner equipment and supplies, $500. Coroner bond, $182.65. Uh, coroner's vehicle operation and maintenance, $500. Uh, that uh, money was transferred into those line items. Uh, we also um, transferred um, out of the reserve for transfers the $17,582 for the tourism grant. Um, the uh, next one is for the constable bonds, the bicentennial celebration, the wellness center repairs and maintenance, $12,000. Uh, the constable bonds, $289.85. I'm sorry. Uh, bicentennial celebration, $300. The Wellness Center Repairs and Maintenance, $12,000. Um, that line item um, needed uh, money put into it for those repairs and maintenance at the Wellness Center. Uh, the Sheriff's Office um, Vehicle Lease Payment for the Principal and for the Interest. Uh, we also had to transfer into those line items. And all of those come out of the Reserve for Transfers. And the last line item... Uh, would be the fringe uh, workman wor workers comp line item. Uh, we had an additional premium due for twelve thousand, uh, a little over twelve thousand dollars. We had a little bit left over in that. Uh, I think there's like three hundred and twenty dollars left over in that line item. But uh, we'll have to pay that premium before the end of the year, and we need to also transfer that in. To that line item to pay that invoice but these budget transfers total fifty thousand five hundred and eighty eight dollars and eighty cents and they were all out of the uh, general fund in and out of the general fund and we'll just need to approve on those and if you have any questions um, just let me know i may not be able to hear you but Stop me and let me know if you have any questions at all. So I entertain a motion to approve the fiscal year 2024 budget transfers number five upon uh, when you're ready. I'll make a motion to approve the fiscal year 24 budget transfer number five. I'll second. Motion on the floor, property second to approve uh, fiscal year 2024 budget transfer number five. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Enter fund cash transfer number three. Okay, this is our um, fiscal year uh, 24 enter fund cash uh, transfers. Uh, if you all want to open that up, this is a transfer of $50,000. Uh, from the LGEA into the jail fund um, that um, all of our LGEA funds support our jail fund, and that is just 
uh, transfer to keep uh, the jail funds supported, and uh, we will need approval on that. Those funds are just transferred over. Um, they're budgeted, and it's just a standard uh, interfund cash transfer to uh, that money is used to support the jail fund. When you're ready, I'll entertain a motion to approve the interfund cash transfer from LGA to jail fund $50,000. I'll make a motion to approve the interfund cash, cash transfer from LGA to jail fund. I'll second it. Motion on the floor. It's been properly second to approve the interfund cash transfer from LGA to the jail fund uh, in the amount of $50,000. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Updated standing order list. Okay, we have included uh, a new updated standing order list. Uh, we include um, anything that uh, needs to be paid, um, like on a monthly basis, we put it on this standing order list, and we always uh, will submit that to DLG after uh, it's presented to the court for approval. Uh, we only added three uh, line items to the uh, standing order list, and I'll did not get those highlighted. I thought that I have those on there, but I'll go ahead and point those out to you. The two that we uh, put on the standing order list, is, which kind of is a standard procedure to include all the bond payments on the standing order list. So, of course, those two P&I uh, account codes for the sheriff's office, it's down on the second page, and it's uh, account number uh, 017200 and 606001, and those are for the Sheriff's Office Vehicle Lease Payment, Principal, and Interest. We added those two to get those bond payments taken care of. And then the last one that we added on there was at the very bottom of page two, it's 8050103988, and that's the clerk storage fees. Um, that is the clerk, Randy Williams's, um, it's the clerk dock fees. Uh, he pays uh, certain invoices out of that account, and when he brings them to us, uh, we just want to be able to get that on there because that is uh, paid out for for invoices for him. But uh, we do need to include that on the standing order list. But those are the only three accounts that we um, added to that list that we'll be submitting to DLG also, as well. I make a motion to approve the updated standing order list. I'll second. Motion on the floor been properly seconded to approve the updated standing order list. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, hey, Jim. Yeah. Um, I just really want to uh, let everyone know that I appreciate uh, everyone understanding that uh, I couldn't be there in person this afternoon and uh, with everything that's going on with my dad I just want to thank you all and uh, that's all I have for tonight and I appreciate it. Alright you go uh, for, go take care of your dad alright. I'll, uh, I'll sit in on the rest of the meeting but if, there, if anybody has any questions just let me know yeah. but thank you all. You want me to leave you on the phone? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes huh? Yeah, I'll stay till the end. Oh you're dedicated <laughs> alright. You tell your dad we all said hello alright. Appreciate that. Appreciate the prayers. Thank you. All right. I'm setting you down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Moving along. Next item up is library board uh, appointment. Uh, I got. Uh, I've talked to Sandra Pelfrey and I've talked to uh, Allison, the librarian. I think maybe some of the managers got calls too, and she's explained to me. So does Sandra with their reasoning behind uh, who they're appointed. It makes sense. Uh, it's uh, David Campbell, and uh, David uh, has a background in IT, which he works at uh, Moorhead uh, State University, MSU. 
and right now the library is undergoing a huge uh, scanning of all Lynn Nichols books. And MSU is doing it. They have interns there, and they need that connection with MSU, which is David. And that's what he does. That's what he loves to do. He's excited about it. I have worked with David in the past. He's very good at what he does. And so that, that is who they're requesting for us to approve, which is David Campbell. So that name is submitted before you today. So uh, I will accept a motion to approve uh, his appointment to the library board, if you so deem it. I'll make a motion to approve <laughs> and appoint David Campbell to the library board. All right, calm down, guys. That was the same time. Who's going to second it? I'll second All right, we have a motion on the floor. It's been uh, properly second to uh, uh, appoint David Campbell to the library board. Uh, any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, David. Moving along. Uh, Morgan County Water District Board of Commissioners. And I believe the people that are re-nominating uh, is Brian and Zach. Yeah, so the, uh, the Water Board has asked to uh, uh, re-nominate Brian Wells, as, who is the current chairman, and also uh, Zachary uh, Engel, who is the uh, secretary. So those are the names that they wish to put forth. Uh, I have no problem with either one of those gentlemen, and I'll accept a motion and entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we reappoint Brian Wells and Zachary Engel for, for the next term beginning January 1st, 2024. I'll second. second. <laughs> well, they're fighting to nominate. Boy, we got a fight going over here on the other side tonight. Which one of you is going to take it? Oh, oh. All right, Donnie. All right, we have, uh, we have a motion on the floor to properly second to reappoint Brian Wells and Zachary Engel to the uh, water board. Uh, any questions or discussion? All in favor? Uh, uh, opposed? Motion carries. Transfer station hire. We actually had somebody uh, that applied. <laughs> we interviewed him. Uh, a pretty good guy. His name's uh, Brenton uh, Wade Phipps. He goes by Wade. And it will be a, a part time and starting at $10 an hour. And uh, he's ready to go as soon as you guys approve him. I don't think he started yet. Has he? No, he's. He has not started to work yet. We don't get too many uh, uh, people apply to work there. <laughs> and this is to backfill the one that we lost, correct? Exactly. Okay. Make a motion we hire Brent <coughs> Phipps part time at the transfer station. I'll second. <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> 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 uh, so we have a motion on for us properly second uh, uh, to hire Britton Wake Phipps part-time at the transfer station at $10 an hour. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, <laughs> motion carries. Uh, we're having too much fun here tonight. People's going to talk. All right, moving right along. Uh, Cole Severance, uh, this is a resolution. Uh uh, for L LDGA funded support county and volunteer fire departments and rescue squad projects uh, for the amount of $269,778 and to allow the judge executive to sign necessary documents as required by the Department of Local Government. Uh, this is the uh, package for them. You want to yeah, you talk about that a little bit yourself? Or? Uh, but the attachment is on there, so. You, yeah. Yeah, so you want me to go ahead and read the resolution? Is that what needs to do? Yeah. Just the. There's a lot. Yeah. Well, this is adoption of the resolution of the Morgan County Physical Court authorizing the filing of the uh, Kentucky uh, Local Government Economic Development Fund, House Bill HB1 project uh, application for up to $269,778 in local government economic development. Authorizing and directing the Morgan County Judge Executive to execute any documents which are deemed necessary by DLG to carry out this project. And uh, so that's the resolution attached. Is, uh, is that the stuff that they're yes. we're buying is attached on there? Now, the, to, when I started this, I called the fire departments in. And the 
qualification to get on this and get equipment was to buy equipment that would lower their ISO rating and in turn, which would lower property insurance. Is that, not, is that true, Don, Donnie? Donnie's fire chief. So that, that was a qualification I put on them. So they went back and they came out and they, they determined what equipment they needed that would actually lower that ISO rating and in turn that will give back to the community. So we're spending money on the fire department, but it's gonna go back to the community too and lower insurance rates once they get this stuff and their ISOs go down. And we got two more chiefs in the back tonight there too. And this lower ISO rating will also play into more economic development with uh, some of the potential businesses that we're looking to come in here because that will be attractive to them to have a fire department that can uh, do their job for their future employees as well as the, their business. After you review all that, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept this request for Fire I'll say Barely let me make Yeah, 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 you yeah. don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll make motion that we. You need to abstain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept resolution of $269,777.91 to come out of cold savings for the Morgan County Fire Departments. And I'll say All right. We have a motion on the floor. It's been properly uh, second uh, to uh, request uh, LGEDA funding to support county volunteer fire departments and rescue squad projects in the amount of $269,778 and to allow Judge Executive to sign necessary documents as reported by DLG. Is there any other questions or discussion? There being none, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Aye. And one abstain. One thing I want to point out on there, and I'm not doing it to make their head swell, but I, I really appreciate the West Liberty Fire Department for only doing a very minimum amount after they, they get tax revenue and everything yes. else. So that's, that's yeah, we, we paid their insurance, but that's, you know, they, they got a taxing district and they didn't push anything to get into this. Uh, they make a, they got a lot more money than our, our volunteer fire departments out in the county. And yeah, but they, uh, they did not push to get in on all this and they, they very well could have, but they, they stood back. They came to the meetings, but they stood back. Yeah. Our, our volunteer fire departments yeah. definitely in need. All right. Next up. Okay. Multi-generational resource complex resolution. With the advent of, has everybody heard about HB9? House skip Bill 9. Communications. Hmm? Yeah, oh, I skipped one. I'm sorry. Oh, all right. Oh, oh. well, here, here's the thing on this. I'm going to actually table this one. I'm going to talk about it, but I'm going to table it because uh, uh, it needs to go back and there's some changes that need to be, be made to it. Uh, it's not an RFQ. It's uh, what, what are we going to call it? RF? RFP, request for proposal. It's going to be a request for proposal. Now this does not, does not, the way it's, it's going to be written, it does not determine who we're going to get the radios from. That will come later. And correct, Josh? Uh, he has got Josh Farrell, the director of Gateway Ad this year. And uh, so we'll go back out to the RFP and we'll look at it and send it out. And the, there won't be no engineering as it's written right now. That won't be in there, right? Yeah, correct. Um, now you, you come up and take a mic and talk to this. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so what you'll typically do for radio projects is you would do a request for proposals. So we would solicit, you will have um, entities that would respond to the uh, request for proposals that will give you pricing included in that. So that would give everyone an opportunity to look at that up front and then make any uh, determination to select the appropriate company uh, based on pricing as well as other uh, factors that we would write into the request for proposal. Pricing would just be one of those to make yeah. sure that you find a suitable uh, consultant, if you will, for the project. 
but that will all be based yeah. upon uh, the criteria that you select. Yeah, and that's all this is. It's, it's nothing other. <laughs> But well, that's what well, this is tabled till next month. So now you know what that's about, and just stay where you're at because we're going straight into the multi generational resource complex the resolution. Uh, Josh, might want to just give them a quick brief on HB nine, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, so House Bill nine um, in the last uh, legislative session, uh, the General Assembly appropriated two million dollars for House Bill nine. It was originally around 40 some odd counties that were um, included in that. Morgan County was one of the first counties, one of the uh, original counties. Since then, they've expanded that to around uh, 106 or 116 counties statewide that are now eligible for the House Bill 9 funds. But House Bill 9 funds are um, essentially available to local governments and other public entities to apply for to match federal grants. So. After a local public entity applies for a federal grant, you can then submit a, an application uh, to apply for House Bill 9 funds. As I mentioned, in the last General Assembly or last legislative session, there was a $2 million appropriated. We do believe, just based on our conversation, is that there will also be an amount included in the upcoming session. Uh, I don't know what that would be, but it will probably likely be a greater amount than the original seat money that was put in. Session. Extremely great if it goes away. <laughs> All right, but that's that's the background on HB nine. Uh, having went around and talked to a lot of the businesses, uh, Lion Apparel, ARH, the school system, uh, one of the biggest problems uh, uh, issues that we have in Morgan County is childcare. Uh, there's we got one daycare here in town. It's booked up. The Head Start is booked up two years more out. And it's, it's an issue. It's not just an issue here, but it's an issue in the, in the Gateway District. And Josh can probably talk more to that here in a bit about something else we're getting ready to do. But having had that discussion and trying to get people back in the workforce who cannot, you know, single moms, dads, whatever, can't because they don't have decent, you know, affordable child care. Uh, people who are working don't have a place to drop them off at. Uh, I thought a multi-generational facility, which on um, Part of the building would take care of the daycare issue, and uh, I, I'm looking at it from the concept of something from uh, like a, youth, a childhood development center where we have anything, and who knows what it'll turn out. This is what I'm looking at, but uh, newborns to 18 months, and then you got your uh, early Head Start folks and Head Start, and then maybe even a, a program to develop. And this gets into programs, which me and Josh has been talking about too. This is not just about a facility. This is about program development to take care of those uh, those newborns, as well as those uh, those kids that, that get out of Head Start and maybe up to 12 years old programs, after school programs, and things for them and things for them to do in a facility with trained people and and that's safe and all that. And so that's the vision on that. The other part of that facility would be like a senior center. But I look at it more as a senior resource center as well. And, and currently, you know, Gateway Ed runs the senior centers and I think they're down there on a floodplain. It gets in that old health building with mold and everything else in it. It'd be nice to have our youth and our seniors right there in, in the same area together. And, and I think that'll help us in a long way and have a major impact on the county. I think it'll have a major economic development impact with the businesses and what other businesses potentially coming in, which we're getting ready to get into. And uh, I guess what would be best for the county and get people on the, in the workforce. And Josh, you got any, what do you want? Is that anything else to add to that? That's pretty much where we're at on this. Uh, but to get this in, we have to get this in now because after January, HB9 will be opened up to other counties other than the original coal uh, counties. And so we really need to get this approved, get it in and get it going and, uh, and go from there. But then, and I've always, I already talked to men, uh, Mr. Farrell, don't want to get too familiar, Josh. Uh, we've also discussed, you know, uh, phase two and phase three of this project too. Phase two would be an aquatic center with a swimming pool and uh, a rehab. I've talked to, once again, line of pearl, like ARH is interested in doing rehab work and water aerobics and all that. And that would get us back into the swimming pool business, but with additional capabilities in that facility. 
And then maybe even later, a phase three, which would be an administration building. Because I don't know how much longer this thing's going to last. The four structural engineers have already said it's uh, ready to go. <laughs> but that's, uh, it would probably in the future, you're looking at a three phase project. But right now, the most important thing I see is taking care of our youth and getting our parents back to work and helping those that are working and as well getting our, sen our seniors, getting them into a nice facility. So this thing's gone. So basically the resolution is the resolution of the Morgan County Physical Court for adopting the Kentucky Model Procurement Code, KRS 45A, and authorizing Judge Executive Jim Gazay and successors in title as the official project representative to establish selection criteria, advertise for the request for architect qualifications, and appoint the architect selection committee and negotiate fees for architect services for the multi-generational resource complex. And you read the rest of it yourself and Alex, uh, when you, once you're finished, and, well, entertain a motion. Or if you have questions, you can lead with those first. I'll make a motion for the multi generation resource complex resolution. How much how much money will Morgan County be up front to do the Arctic services and, and everything else? How much Josh, you got that? Sir, um, so typically what we do for these type of projects, uh, as the resolution states, we would draft the request for qualification which would include you know, set criteria. The judge would appoint a committee, score that, and then you would select a consultant and architect. Um, Typically, if, if any cost at all, that would be relatively low. What you would do is work with that consultant. You tell them what you want, square footage-wise, the needs of the building, what all that would include. And then they would come back with a rough cost estimate for engineering, all consulting services, plus the construction. Um, then their fees would be included in that. And typically, what we would do is then we would start the grant process once we have a cost estimate. Um, whether it be all grant or there would be you know, a mix of funds, we would present that to the judge and the staff to make a decision. Um, typically, there would be very minimal funds unless the project is funded, and then the fees would be outlined in a contract to be executed. So minimal fees for any um, initial work, cost estimate type work, to just know what we were looking at. And but originally, if we if we go through with this and we get a federal grant, and then that HB nine would match it. That, yes, sir. That would be for the that, that's the, that would be yeah. under the construction. How that would move forward in the future. Yes, sir. I'll second. Did you say you second? Second. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. It's been properly seconded. Uh, to approve a resolution to abide by the Kentucky Model Procurement Code for the procurement during this project and to authorize Judge Executive Jim Gazay and successors in title as the official project representative. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next one up. Um, hybrid Advanced Materials Project Resolution. First of all, the first thing I'm gonna say, this is not a landfill, this is not a dump. This is a resolution that ensures the procurement for this project will be done in accordance with Kentucky Procurement Code and authorizes uh, Judge Jim Gazay and successors in title as official representative for the project. What this project is about, the hybrid landfill is basically taking uh, trash, organic trash, and taking that trash and, and taking it to this company, which is Eureka Energy, and they would take this inside a facility. This facility is pressurized. There is no emissions, no stacks. There's no mechanical anything going on inside this facility. All this trash will be taken inside this pressurized building, and they can handle, basically, if the max they can handle 7,700 tons of trash a day. This trash would go inside that facility and then it would be going to a water wash system, and then it would be going to a pressurized, like a pressure cooker, and they would mix a little acid into it, 
and then it would break all those stuff down and what takes in a landfill generations they can do in a day and it would break that down and they can take the byproducts of it which would be methane and sell that they can also take uh, the sugars that come out of it and use it for recycling plastic that's the big sale that's the, the money that we make uh, this would more or less eliminate a lot of the stuff that goes on at the transfer station we uh, in that amount of trash we'd also be able to take trash from the surrounding counties and all that would come into Morgan County uh, they're looking at jobs maximum jobs 50 you'd have laborers and then you'd have technical skills some of the technical ones would bring in uh, $30 an hour in wages and all that up to 50 of those it would need a uh, what they say 50 acres 50 acres he said 50 acres and they need th this for the building the complex the facility itself is 30 acres and this is huge. This technology is actually technology that's been used overseas in Europe for 15 years. It's proven. Uh, it's been looked at through the Department of Defense. I've seen this before. Uh, no emissions, no smells, none of that. And what, what, what was some of the other stuff they said today that was... Uh, um, Basically, the... Yeah. The wells they drill will be, yeah. uh, what do you say, stainless steel, stainless steel encased concrete, in concrete, so there'll be no water. Epoxy coated. Uh, well, they got to be 100% pressurized for the system to work. Or, so the water, there's there's no leak proof. Or, the water goes back into the ground? No, the water goes back into the pond and recycles. So, uh, yeah. Is pond lined or? Uh, he didn't really say about that, but they'll, they'll build a big pond for the, that'll be the Yeah, there'll the be a pond water. there. Yeah, you talked about that a little bit. There will be a pond. But the water, water the water will back be, out, he, he <coughs> said it would be potable. Yeah, he said it would be potable and be clean. That's what he said today, I believe. He said that right, Leroy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I show that to Donnie and Eric, so let them watch that. I'll tell you what, he showed us made a look nice. Show it Basically, the resolution we're asking tonight is for a feasibility study. That is all. The feasibility study will determine if we have the feedstock. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the things that they can do, one of the that will help the local farmers out, is uh, uh, switchgrass, hemp. They will actually buy that. Of course, trash will have a tipping fee, but that, that stuff they will actually buy. So that could potentially put our, our some of our farmers that used to grow tobacco back in the business of growing hemp and other things that they can sell to them in the off time when they can't get, uh, you know, like during the winter or other materials, and they can take that and put it into the mix of that and create methane out of it. In fact, hemp, uh, they said is one of the best uh, byproducts of that is, is methane. And uh, if you know your Morgan County and Eastern Kentucky history back in uh, World War II, uh, that's what was our main, one of our main crops around here was hemp. I also said you take animal carcass. Yep, takes animal carcass. Anything organic will go into that. Uh, that that eliminates the issue, as you'll hear in a little bit. I'll be telling you when we get to talking about the transfer operations right now. That transfer station, by the end of the physical year, is going to cost us, and Jefferson will talk more about this, uh, $250,000 in the hole. And this, if we can, if this works, and and there also there's a National Science Foundation grant that the company is is applied for a three hundred thousand dollar grant in which they will come in here and build a laboratory and to to test the feedstock, uh, test the soil, look at what we can grow, look at all the other processes that we can do here with this, and and they, that that grant would pretty much pay for all that. And once again, we could we'll be doing this under under HB nine and federal grants and stuff like that on our side. 
And in fact, this $230,000 grant, which is ARC, I'll let Josh go ahead and start discussing that. Uh, yes, sir. So we've, uh, again, as the judge said, this is just for a feasibility study to determine the viability of such a facility. Um, judge has submitted a free application to the Appalachian Regional Commission in the amount of $200,000 to $50,000 uh, matching for the feasibility study. And uh, we do intend to apply for House Bill 9 funds for a $50,000 match. Which would be a low risk for us to get that money and go ahead and see if this is feasible and viable for Morgan County. And it wouldn't cost us nothing to find out if it's viable. But this is an opportunity I don't think we can pass up, especially something that has the potential to bring this kind of, uh, and we'd be the first one in the nation to get this. This is only used overseas, and I think you said Paraguay, it's in Paraguay. And uh, we'd probably, we'd also, at a laboratory, we'd probably just have a national platform for training too. Do you have a location on this for the uh, They're looking at that, they have, we have not, uh, that is not determined. The company itself is looking at, uh, the topography now and looking at areas, I would assume they'd be looking for an abandoned strip mine, which would bring uh, AML money into play and all that. So, so there's not one anywhere in the United States. Nope, this is brand new technology. I've, I've seen it used overseas. I've seen it used in the military, but uh, it's not here in the United States. We would be the first ones to get it, and then we would get the National Training Center out of it too, if that all comes to fruition, if it can get past the feasibility study. And also there's a solar project that's going along with this. Uh, we have met with uh, Licking Valley uh, RECC and they were pretty excited about it. And because uh, you're, you're looking at a lot uh, with the solar project that comes with it, uh, you're looking at, I think he said about 120 acres and producing like 90 megawatts of power, which we would uh, then be sold to e uh, Eastern uh, Kentucky uh, Power. And that has the possibility of lowering our electrical rates as well, utility rates. Maybe. <laughs> so how much money are we, just to make clear one more time, how much money will taxpayers be out up front, stake money in there? Well, first, this, this will just be to um, procure a consultant to do the feasibility study. If for whatever reason, I can't answer that question on the part of the judge, but you know, but it would be up to the fiscal court if the grants were not funded, how you would proceed. If the grants are funded, uh, very little risk to nothing, but we'd get the grant from ARC, and then we'd get the matching funds from uh, HB9, from the legislature. Uh, we, I've always reached out to the political side of this, and they are, seem to be pretty much in favor of this. So I think we got a good chance of getting it and not being out anything on the feasibility study. And then if the feasibility study comes back positive, I think we'll be in line for more grants. And then we can go from there and look at it and then come back to the court and see if this is how, how we want to proceed. But the first thing we got to do is do this feasibility study. So if we don't get the grant, we're out 250000 No, if we don't get the grant, we're not. We just won't do it. <laughs> that's your decision. That's, that's our, our decision, yeah. But I'll, I'll say this, I think the, uh, the company's got a lot of skin in this game too, and they have money set up as well. One, one thing I would um, make sure would be included in a contract or for whatever uh, consultant that you would select is to make it contingent upon funding, yes. uh, grant funding, so that way they would be on notice up front and there would be no expectation uh, until the court would decide at a later date if you would like to move forward if there were no grant funding. Yeah. Definitely put that stipulation. And definitely. And there's no way I would move forward until I brought it back to the court to look at it and see what they tell us. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to be honest about it. It, it. Kind of like I was involved in the meeting. With, yeah, he came in. You were still at work. <laughs> but... How does a company pick Morgan County, Kentucky, out of the whole United States for the first plant? That's that's the only thing that that really stands out to me. Because you have New York City that has millions of tons of trash themselves, 
Knox County and other big cities in the United States. Mm -hmm. And here we are. He said there were several reasons. Uh, first, because we don't have a landfill. So you wouldn't have to get into that. Uh, we have the agricultural stuff that they need. Uh, they're looking to do it in the Miami Valley, not New York City, Chicago. They're looking to do all this in the Miami Valley. And plus it also has the solar uh, part of it too, which we, that fits into as well. Uh, second thing, uh, I know this this guy, I don't know him personally or well, but I've not known him well enough and known him for years. He's from Pike County. Uh, the company Eureka is out of uh, Wyoming, but he is the president of the company. And he lives over in Pike County. Yeah, he did, um, he just thought Morgan County, he's a Kentuckian, he thought Eastern Kentucky was where he wanted to bring it, and this is his home, and he thought Morgan County would be a, a good place to start it at and look at it and see if it works. He also said they tried to put it in Indiana and Illinois too, and then no one didn't want it. So, must be a reason. Well, it's just a feasibility study, so. There's, there's no advantage to solar. No. There's what? Waste of money on solar. I can't understand you. Speak it's up. a waste of money on solar. It is never, never I worked. disagree with you. You know, this, this, this county has passed up. Issue. We, we passed up. We lost. If you listen to the elders, we, we've missed Moorhead State University. We missed all the other stuff. This is another opportunity. And all it is is a feasibility study. The feasibility study is nothing but determine if it'll work or not. If, it's, if the feasibility study says it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if it does, it opens the door for it. Opens the door for what? For this to happen. And they said you didn't know exactly well, you, uh, where they was going to put it at. Well, I thought they done had the, the land picked out. For no, them. we've looked at several. They've looked at several pieces of land around here. And then somebody went right out and started telling people it's going to be a dump in a, in a landfill, without even knowing what they were talking about. I don't know. It's the first I heard about it when the agenda came out. So, well, I'll call for a vote on it. You guys can decide right here and there. I'll entertain a motion now. Ma I'll call. Yes. Well, yes. Go ahead. We're we're talking about topic. Yeah. Okay. I'll speak for my neighbors and friends and family. Yeah. We live right next to where this is going to be. Yeah. And they said that they don't want to know We don't want the traffic. It's going to be hazardous. All the trucks coming and going. And there is still a possibility of biohazard material. We know this. We have these wells. We've known in the past these wells leak eventually. And we don't have, all of us don't have city water. We would rely on our water, uh, well water. And it could pollute our watershed. And all these other things that it could bring about. The trucks tearing up the roads that we just got paid. Mm -hmm. Um, and it will destroy our, I feel like it's going to destroy our world. What's your name, ma'am? What, what's your name? Pamela Phipps. Pamela Phipps. Yes, you're one of the ones that called today. Yeah. Okay. And I understand that this facility will be capable of 7,000 tons. They're not supposed to bring that much, but you can't rule that out. Well, even and if they do bring 7,000 tons, it's all done within 24 hours. It's, uh, it's operating 24-7. There's no trash. That's Mm -hmm. States, whole United States, not thought this is it's so wonderful. You know, why is it here? All uh, right. I have a good idea of why it's here. What is that idea? Uh, because we're like guinea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> they think we're kids and we don't know all this stuff. This, 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 this technology has been around for 20 years. Well, it probably has, and so has the, the common sense. Yeah, there's not so much uh, common sense. It's and, not so common. It's, it's pretty obvious. And that wouldn't hurt anyone and make up the money that you need for that. 
you know. I tell you what, won't you come down to the transfer station and work for a day with us down there? I don't want to do that. No, you yeah. don't. Won't you come down there for a day and work with us and find out what really goes on down there? That thing is getting ready to put this county $250,000 in the hole by next July. That is techno That thing is a mess down there. Don't you add it on 10 cents per ton? 10 cents? What does that make you anymore? Well, you know, right now we're getting ready to talk about that coming up. And just adding, uh, uh, adding up a penny a pound is going to raise the tonnage from $45 to $65, $65 a ton. And guess what? That's still going to put us, the county, in a hole, $120,000. And that's going to end up breaking our budget if we don't figure out something to do with this. Well, that's something to definitely look into, raising the price. Well, all right. Then I've got my imagine that a lot of people will be wanting to hear about that, too. I will if they knew the stuff, <laughs> they might want to know be more interested. Well, you ain't going to find out nothing jobs. with our feasibility study. And I know we need jobs, but we, there's other ways. What are those ways? What are those ways? What are those ways? You don't know, do you? You do not know, do you? No, but I That's right. You don't know. You're just. what your job is. Well, we're trying to do that. Not mine. It's your job. Yeah, it's our job. We're trying to do it. All of you being voted in to represent us and stand for us and do what's right for the people. And this is not, to me, this is not, this is going to devalue our land prices over there and maybe even ruin our water. And it's not going to ruin your water. dangerous on the roads. We travel through there constantly. And it's just, I, I ask you to not bring this resolution to us. I just, this is bad speaking. Mm -hmm. That's the point speaking. No, the place hasn't been picked yet. Actually, they've talked about three or four locations. What you're talking about is one location they're looking at because it's closest to the uh, to the mountain parkway, but there's other uh, uh, abandoned mines all over this county, right. and they're also looking at the solar, which will be spread out all over the county, which will bring. Look at the guys in County, is there not landfills or a place that there shit mines? They they have a land they have a landfill. They already have a landfill in place there. Why didn't they want this? Because of the. Uh, the way their their landfill is set up and the way their government their county government runs that landfill. They make money off that landfill, ma'am. You think they're gonna give up their cash cow? <laughs> uh, no, but they can make more money off of this. Uh, well they we'll see. But anyway, that's my concern and, and our family and friends that's great. <coughs> I hope we just don't want this noise making pollution. How do you know it's noise? There's no, let the, the, I me mean to tell you, there's no mechanical equipment in there whatsoever. Where's the noise going to come from? All I know is it all sounds good. And I've made cakes, but tasted awful, but they had good eyes on. <laughs> Thank you. I give you that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there's no mechanics involved in this process whatsoever. No mechanics. It's, it's, it's an aerobic process. Bacteria, then pressure. So, well, let's just go ahead and end it now. And I call for a vote uh, motion. Is there is there a motion? I'll make a motion. I, I think we ought to look into it. If it's good, it's good. If it ain't, forget it. I mean, that's all we can do. I have a second. Is there a second? Is there a second? Motion fails. Passed. All right, moving on to the next subject. Transfer station operational cost. Total revenues for this or, uh, October was $13,121.51. Uh, our total expenditures, however, was $29,585.58. Of that, $10,000 was payroll and $14,000, or almost $15,000 that was road key disposal fee. So that leaves us for the month of October in a deficit of $16,400. $54.07. Now, if we continue that trend as being stated, by the end of the 
fiscal year, we will be in the hole $250,000. That is a quarter of a million dollars that has to come out of somewhere. That's a general fund, from what I believe. That means facilities aren't being able to take care of. We won't have roads paved, culverts put in, gravel roads, anything. That's, that's taking away from the county. So, one of the things that I have we looked at, and I want to bring this to y'all's attention, and if Sheena, she's still on the phone, she can jump in. And... Sheena, you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. All right. Okay. Uh, Sheena and I sat down and we worked this report. I'm trying to hear, Jeff. I'm trying to hear. I can barely hear. Uh, I'll repeat what he says to you. All right. Yeah, put okay. your she's can you hear better? Turn, is it on? Uh, yeah. Let's... yeah. All right. Uh, we originally budgeted $140,000, and this is just for solid waste disposal fees. Does this not include payroll, supplies, electric, you know, the ancillaries that go along with operating a transfer station? It was, again, it's 140000 Since July, we have spent $86,114.92. That is 61.51% of our budget. We still have seven months left of disposal fees. And thus far, the way things are going, every fiscal report, it seems that the fees are going up higher and higher and higher. And mainly that is due to the cost of diesel. Uh, we have a fuel surcharge from Runkey, and it's on a sliding scale. I couldn't tell you what it will be next month or the month after. Every month is kind of up to the economy. Um, so that only leaves us $53,885.08 for eight months. Or I'm sorry, for the next seven months. That's what all we have left in the budget. And I guarantee you we are going to blow through that. How Quick much fashion. was that, Jefferson? Uh, what did you say there? That leaves uh, $53,885.08. And that has to be, if we had to budget, we had to spread that out over seven months. But, like I said, we're going to blow through that pretty quick. That's not something I'm happy to look at. And, again, that's that's coming out of somebody's budget. Wait, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sheena. Go ahead, Sheena. I was just going to, I was going to chime in on what uh, Jefferson was saying about uh, the remaining uh, unencumbered free balance on that disposal fees. Uh, yeah, we have the 53885 left in um, – that line item, what we done was um, Jefferson and I took a uh, took the eighty six thousand uh, one hundred fourteen dollars and ninety two cents uh, that had been paid over the five months. We took a monthly average on that, uh, which would be seventeen thousand uh, dollars roughly, and uh, we multiplied that by seven which would be over almost $67,000. If you took an average of that, what it would cost over uh, the next seven months to pay those monthly invoices for Rumpke to uh, take care of our uh, solid waste disposal. Um, as you can see, there only be 50, there's only $53,000 left, or I'm sorry, yes, $53,000 left. So we are thinking that that, or we're going to, be around seventy to seventy-five thousand dollars. Was that what you had uh, figured, Jefferson? Yeah, that was just on the Rumpke disposal fees alone. Yes. That doesn't include payroll. And That's just doing an average. Not, I mean, it could fluctuate. It could be higher. You know, of course, it could be lower. That's just a, a monthly seventeen thousand dollar average to Rumpke. So if we raise it this penny per, per pound, Jefferson, how mm -hmm. much did you anticipate we'd still be in the hole? Uh, we're still looking at about 120000 still on the hole. Okay, and that would, that's 200 and how much? Uh, Gina, what was that number? Do you remember? Two. Tell me what he said. What did he say? So a penny per pound would gain us over 100000 dollars over the course of the year? Roughly, yeah. Over a hundred thousand dollars over the course of the year? Roughly, yeah. And a penny per pound is only bumping us the actual cost you know, for 100 pounds up a dollar. Mm -hmm, exactly. So why couldn't we look at a higher than a penny per pound? No. I proposed a penny per pound because it was a little bit easier to swallow. I didn't want the taxpayers to see that and then 
right. realize they're not going to do it. You know? Well, here's the so. here's the way I look at it. I don't know how everyone else looks at it, but uh, Chris Adams said there uh -huh. when he hauls rock, yep. his rock prices go up. It means his prices has to go right. up. You right. have to pay more for the product. It in you know I work for Lion. Uh, material goes up. We have to charge more for turnout gear. Right. These fire chiefs can take. It, it's definitely not cheap. Uh, it's definitely right. trickle down. Yeah, and I think the smart thing, in my opinion, to do would, would be to go up from this one cent per pound. Okay. Uh, we can't we can't keep going into right. this. Right. Well, that's back there. There's, there's definitely options that. Right, and that's and that's one thing I want. Not only the fiscal court, but people in Morgan County, if we continue to go into the hole like this, the only thing I can do and recommend is that we terminate our transfer station and then that we mandate countywide trash services. And we will contract that out to whoever is the lowest bidder, basically. So you could have waste management charging you who knows what, or it could be Rumpke. You know, you, you gotta really think about the the distance between the houses, how many people live per square mile, and that's how they're gonna factor in your bill because they too had to pay for the diesel to drive from whatever landfill they drive to, collect your trash, and then go back. So, you know, I'm yeah, not, I'll, I'll just be, exactly. I'm, that's like my yeah. nuclear option. I don't want to push it. Yeah, so and that's exactly yeah. why I'm bringing this proposal up because I don't want to see that. If we go that route, it's not good for the county. KRS mandates we have to have. Yes, we have to have trash service, yeah. and that transfer station covers that. Yeah, because we we give the public the option. Another yeah. thing I want to point out. Uh, right now, we're the cheapest place around. That's why oh. everybody comes to work. Yes, County. exactly. Yes. And that's my first two months. We fought that, and we've, yeah. we we finally got we've that. stopped the out of county people from coming in. They were coming yeah. in from Winchester, Louisa, yeah. so, yeah. and everywhere. So we, it's cheaper here. We still get it. One every once in a while, but for the most part, we've we've knocked that in the head. The other problem we have though is commercial. Sure. Yeah, we got a lot of update. Yeah. Well, the the right now that that permit we have down there is only for like residential trash, and we got businesses bringing in commercial trash and dumping it over there because it's so cheap. Yep. Somebody can bring a dump truck over there and drop it off, sixty eight dollars, but they go to Moorhead, three hundred twelve dollars. Okay. But guess what? If they give that to guess, who guess who pays the, the, the difference in that? The county, the taxpayer. Yeah. You know, as of right now, what I've been trying to do, my goal is to make this department self-sustaining. It's basically a pay to play. You come out there, you're paying for the service, your payments to the service supports the service. It's not a burden on the taxpayers. As of right now, it is a burden on the taxpayers. Even if you don't use the facility, you're paying for it in some way, shape, or form because your taxes are going to have to go to covering this deficit that we run. But if we raise the rates and we can cover everything. That's including payroll, the rumpy disposal fee, everything. That's what I'm, I'm wanting to do. There's another thing I need y'all to think about. We are locked into rumpy for three years. And every fiscal year, rumpy's fees are going to go up 5%. So what we're paying today, Add five percent, or ten percent, or fifteen percent. By the time it's all said and done. So and should yes, we a, will have. Should to, be a year by year deal instead of a three year deal. Yeah, with Rumkey, that's that's what the contract we're locked into. So that started in the previous administrations, and they just updated on the last round. I wasn't here when that was done. So, but all I know is. This is my first step. We gotta, we gotta take care of our tipping fees first. We have to make this thing financially sustainable, which it is not now. Yeah, I'm not looking to yeah. make a profit here. But no. We're looking to break even. Yeah. Right. That's what it needs to do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a dollar yeah. in, a dollar out. The, you take the farm company, electric company, and any other company. They have to raise the prices to. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Our, our while you're going in the holes, you've never raised the price yeah, since 2015. Since 2015, prices have not been raised. Yeah. Let's do some quick math here. What three cents per pound give us at the what be our bottom? If, if one cent's going to lower it, how much would, is the exact number? 
you said 250 somebody said yeah. and then go down 420 so we're getting 70 thousand dollars on a penny yeah so it says 14 so if you double it yeah mm -hmm. so so we at three cents we could be uh three cents still won't yeah it's it's like i said it's per pound so i mean we're not trying to get too crazy with it four cents would would put us to the good though. Yeah, four cents would put us up the uh, watching for a minute. Sorry, my quick math isn't with me as right now. Uh probably up somewhere around a hundred. But that would also make us competitive still with the uh surrounding counties and the uh the dump up in Moorhead. Yeah. Of course these numbers don't reflect uh the road department furnishing the back home. That, that is correct. Parts. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the gravel. Right now the road department. Our equipment is taken on their books. Uh, all the diesel that we use comes from the road department. Any maintenance we have comes from the road department. So you have that uh, cost that I list out every month that does not factor in those. I so. called Wolf County today and they charge fourteen seventy five per square yard. They don't have any way to weigh it. Yeah, so, yeah. Brian and I've talked several so times. He's, what would that be? Do you have any idea? What? Not right. I mean, it could be just normal household trash. I wonder what it that would. Yeah, I'd, something I'd have to ask Brian the way they charge theirs because he's wanting to actually go to the way we do ours. He likes our system. He's been down to our transfer station several times. And, the so, weight of the yard material yeah. varies yeah. so much depending on what it is. Right. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be fair at all. Say, did you know what's going to be doing my yard? You wouldn't have the total weight in there. But even with the way they do their stuff over there, I get to talk with Brian. His department's completely self-sustaining. They they actually eke out a small profit every month. He says it's not much, but it's not taking from the county. Well, yours should. Hmm. I mean, that there should be. Yeah, but they also they have a recycling program. Uh, several different ways. What kind of money do you get out of the metal that you get? Uh, right now, unfortunately, the market, the bottom has fell out of it. We were, the last uh, load we had was $77. The load before that was 187 So it, I it just fell. Yeah. So we're breaking even on that, basically. Like I said, it's, we're not making any money on that, but we're not really going at it earnestly either. We're just kind of haphazardly, yeah, just, if you got some metal, throw it over here. So that's, uh, again, a project down the road where we would actually chase it, you know, get every pop can and But right now we're just taking what we got. We're yeah. not putting no money into it. Yeah, just basically I whatever. got the I got that down there so we just get it off the ground and that means our guys aren't on the road going back and forth and burning our diesel up and tear on our trucks, so I think we have to raise it. I mean raise the price off. Yeah. Then we just Now, I suggested that uh, we would raise it a penny for the starting January 1st and then every quarter reevaluate and see, try to dig us out of the hole that we're in. Or we we'll could just go in. rip the band aid off. And, well, I mean, we're going to be in too deep if we, yeah. if we wait too long. Yeah, if we go at it right now, I yeah. think $250,000. So. If we need to start it at January 1st to start getting that going. Yeah, I don't want to sit here and put too much of a burden on the people that are using it, but at the same time. Are we at our limit on the times that we're supposed to get down there? I mean, we're, oh, we're, we're way over. Way over. We're, I, I'm just read the permit. I sent it off to Frankfurt this week. Originally, this station was supposed to deal with 12 tons per year. Uh, we're doing somewhere, I think, 244 tons or 1,000 tons. So... So it, it's a ridiculous amount of you know material moving through that place. And we, do they only bring do they only bring one trailer at a time? Yes, uh, we've talked with them. They will not allocate other res or, uh, assets, as they call it, for another trailer. So we have to basically guess. There's what have, they call first round and second round. First round, first thing in the morning, they'll come down and get the trailer and go. Second round is about two o'clock in the afternoon. Because they have all these other counties they got to go and run trucks. So it's pretty well shut down while the trailer's down. 
That's yeah. That's the problem that we've had like the last few times. Friday before last, I think it was backed up from out to the, the road. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That on that one, the uh, they had a truck breakdown on them. Otherwise, had it been right on time, <coughs> it'd been we wouldn't have had an issue. But their trailer broke or their tractor broke down, so we had to suffer. So either way, when they take the trailer, you're down for two hours. Yeah. Well, no, no. They bring an empty trailer down, and when they swap it out, it's ten minutes tops. So, so they'll bring an empty back when they come pick that. Yeah, yeah, they bring empty down to us. We usually push the the full one back, and as soon as they get in, they back that empty trailer in, and I've seen the operation take you know like ten minutes or less. So it normally don't back up like that. No, no, no. That's when the tractor, the empty trailer broke down, or the tractor trailer broke down. That's it. Kind of put us in a bind. So, and then you factor in holiday weekends and all that. Everybody's trying to get ahead of the rush, yeah. and so again, it's kind of a guessing game. For our guys trying to figure out, do we want to do first round or second round? So. Well, one of the things I would like to do is if we can actually break even with this, that we've been talking about leasing equipment that would serve us better. So we could have overflow hoppers or something to that effect and then we won't be putting binds like that again but first we have to get our no no what happened to the, the compactor the way that they used to do that I mean, uh, the way yeah the compactor what happened was basically like old wore out the what they call the leachate that's the liquid goop that comes out of trash it was leaking into the, uh, or leaching into the groundwater, getting into the Licking River. EPA got onto us for that. So they redid the permit actually to solidify the leachate. But even then, it was just a continued hassle. So they went to the open top. Uh, uh, I don't want to cut anyone off. I don't want to talk over anyone, but. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to see if, uh, I'm not sure if everyone, I couldn't really hear everything, but uh, I was just going to, uh, Jefferson had uh, explained those attachments and I was going to kind of uh, talk about the revenue side of it as well. Um, if you all would um, open up on the attachments on the side uh, for number, line item number 16, uh, if you want to go to uh, the top, to, well, if you go to the second one, which is the disposal fees only, which it says transfer station appropriation report disposal fees, um, you all can see that right now, you know, we talked about that earlier. We have had 86,114.92 so far, which we only have 53,000 left. And, you know, of course, we had uh, budgeted 140,000. So as of right now, uh, Jefferson had um, estimated that we would be roughly seventy thousand dollars in um, in need of money to be transferred into that line item uh, from from somewhere else in the budget. And um, if you want to, if you could see that there, and then if you'll also go up to the top one, which shows um, all the. Um, appropriation line items for the transfer station which they all say the solid waste uh, line items they include payroll disposal fees repairs and maintenance um, supplies uniforms uh, bonds telephone um, the travel expense to the for the dumps um, the water and electric which are our utilities we have budgeted in appropriations two hundred and ninety one thousand nine hundred dollars um, and so far, we, um, we know that the disposal fees on there, we're going to have to add at least another 70000 onto that. So you're looking at, what, around $360,000 roughly right there. And then if you'll go over and open up that third attachment, which is the revenue condition report, you can see on there that... Uh, this is roughly, which, you know, we've paid five months out, and this includes, I know, all of October and most of uh, November. Um, 
revenue side, we have only collected uh, solid waste has two um, revenue line items, one of solid waste receipts, which, you know, are collected from up at the transfer station, and then the uh, permit fees, which we've only budgeted $150,000 to come in. So if you take the $360,000 that we have, you know, appropriated to go out for the transfer station, and then you take the $150,000, which we've only collected right now, $60,000 in revenue, and we've already spent out over $86,000 in bills. So we've only collected 60, we've spent out 86,000. That's just for the uh, disposal fees, not including, you know, the operational side of the transfer station. That puts us around $280,000 difference. I just wanted to go over those reports there with you guys. Thank you. Two oh eight. So if we're at seventy thousand dollars on a penny per pound, so three cents would get us mighty close, or we'll be a little over. Just a touch. I think it's what I don't see any way around. Right now. Yeah, I made my proposal. I think you guys, you know, they elect you guys to speak for them, so I don't want to shock them too bad. I'll let y'all figure out what, how much they can take. What do they charge us haul, haul rate, haul bill? On Your average? Contract. Do you know right off? Uh, I don't have the bill in front of me, but it's, what, I think it's uh, 290 I believe. Right. Round, round trip? Uh, no, that's just one bit. It's a comp, it's like three different pieces on the bill. You got the, how much it costs to dispose of it, plus the haul bill, and then the, just the swap fee, I guess, what you, they call it, so. I can get you a, a copy of that. So we used to call it ourselves. Yeah, we did. That's when we used to lease the uh, roll-off box, and that's when we also compacted our trash. Yeah. So we let the lease go on it. And... and we have plans in the work, but right now we we definitely have some growing pains. And this is something we've ignored it long enough. We we have to take care of it now. I can't mm -hmm. see going in the hole. I mean, no use of it. No, we can't lose money off of it. If we could get this, come to a conclusion and, and find out, you know, raise this and get the money going back in there, I've got another project that we can, I'll ask for this using the same HB9 money to get this transfer station fixed and maybe move it up on the garage and and put the money into that through grants. Or if I have to, we can go into the coal settlements money. And uh, I think Jefferson, I think we came up maybe about $120,000 mm -hmm. where we could move that thing and get it fixed and have you know, a way in and a way out and make it a better traffic pattern and go up there on the garage. But before we get to that, we gotta fix the cost of this thing. And if we get the cost fixed, then I, we can pull this other part off and move that up there. That was my plan B for the transfer station if the other thing failed. So let's go. I think plan B would be a, an option. Right. That's where it needs to be anyway. That way, they, by the river down there, there's no water. Get it away from that river where it's not there's, leaching in there. There's no room to move. There's grow yeah. Or, no, yeah. Improve Get a new permit where we, where we can take in residential and commercial. And There's we room can up there to do the retail pond too. Yeah, yeah. Runoff. yeah exactly. Equipment garage is there. <laughs> Equipment garage, everything. That that is, that that is that that's Plan B, and that's where I. They need a piece of equipment. Yeah, it's right there. They need a break room. Well, I have one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we can put a little shed up there. They can go down to the garage or whatever. Yeah. They have bathrooms. Because right now they have no bathrooms down there. Mm -hmm. I mean, before they were having to use the barn down there. I couldn't believe we were making them do that, but they got a porta potty now. But if we can, if we get these rates raised up and we take care of that, 
and then we move that thing up on the garage hill. That'll take care of that transfer station. And we'll fix it so the public will like it better. They can get in there, it'll be easier to get in. We can get a, you know, entry, egress. We can get two sets of scales. They come in, they weigh, yep. they go dump, and then they weigh on the way out and they pay and they're gone. Yeah, that would be amazing because it, it's pretty much hitting me as up there. Yeah, it's pull a three-way three yeah, exactly. on that. It's a mess. Yeah, it's. I mean, that thing's out, we've outgrown it and we need to move it. And I think that is the way we need to go. And that'll, and if we do that, that'll fix the whole situation. But first, we got to fix these rates. Yeah. And then how much longer is the contract with the uh, Two and a half years. Two and a half more years? Yeah. I think that. I think three cents. Sorry? Three cents, and then we'll look at it again in March. I think we've got to go at least enough to break even yes. yeah, for now and see what we, we can, their rate increases well, are. Well, well, we can do it every, at the end of every fiscal year. We can look at what the inflation cost is, CPI, and work that in to that and do it annually. We've waited, you know, since, since 2015, we've been caught, caught with our pants down. Mm -hmm. And if we go ahead and fix this now, and use this plan B and go to the transfer station, get it in a new area, get the rates fixed, do that, and then put an annual you know, cost increase in there because of inflation and everything else and, and the landfill rates. And tipping fees up there. And those rates are gonna go up even more because the EPA is putting on these landfills, they're getting hammered. And so the rates are gonna go up even more. Fuel. Yeah, then you get the fuel. Yeah, and the, the fuel charge too. That's we're not even I talking about the fuel charge. I think it's five percent. Uh, uh, Jefferson, I'm yeah. sure, but I think so. Yeah, it's just overall five percent for the whole. Overall five percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there is a fuel surcharge. Yes, and that's Jefferson. right, and that's on a sliding scale. So. Yeah, on the sliding scale, right? Yeah, yeah that's where the fuel charge fluctuates. So. Diesel goes up. Our price goes up. So you, you could do the average every year. Yeah. You can average that in. It fuels up and down. Average it out at the end of the year, and then you'll know where you're at. Yeah, this is definitely something, though, that we, we need to stay on top of. So we just can't let it you know, go for another seven years. So we're looking at three cents? Yep. Yeah, I can have next... Uh, meeting i'll have you guys a chart out showing what's going to cost so so you want to table it till next month to the next uh meeting and or mm -hmm. you want to go ahead and do it now you know now you guys are it's going to have to be done we'll have to it's going to be done yeah. if, we, if we put it off to the next month and if we want to start it on january 1st that's not many days to do it that we go to the next physical court meeting yeah no use letting the hole get any deeper yeah mm -hmm. It's like jumping out of an airplane with a parachute. You don't pull the ripcord, you know what's going to happen. So. You've got some bag limits on here. Uh, those are, uh, that was just a directly, uh, or the bag limit. It's actually, I'm getting away from that. If we scale out, uh, scale in, scale out, and I keep telling people this, and I, I don't know why they don't listen. It would be cheaper for the customers to weigh their trash. Oh, yeah. Because they come in with three bags, well, that's, you know, going to be almost $5. Or you weigh it up and it's only 20, 30 pounds. Well, that's what, according to the new rates, that would be less than a dollar or two. So that's why I've been trying to get a lot of people to get away from that. That's why I was limiting the bags. So I don't want people to pay more than what they should. Because right now you could come in with 100 bags. You pay $100 or, you know, if you'd weigh it up, it'd be a lot less. I'm trying to help, you know, yeah. take care of people, so I don't want right. to. I'll make a motion that we increase the transfer rates to three cents more per pound. Or three cents total increase per pound. Okay. All right, we have a motion on the floor. It's been properly second to increase uh, the transfer station uh, 
tonnage by three cents per pound. Three cents per pound. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor? Uh, uh, opposed? Motion carries. Good job. All right. Uh, just another quick piece. Of yes, uh, sir. Go for it. The problems that we're still continuing to have, overflow and whatnot, is the commercial dumpers. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really not, if they're just bringing office trash, that actually falls into municipal solid waste. It is the construction and demolition debris that they're bringing. So, uh, I don't want to say any names or anything, but to give examples, telephone poles, carpet, tearing a house down, roofing shingles, I've actually had to turn away. Apartment roofing yeah. shingles. <laughs> there was a guy showed up that they were roofing three apartment complexes, and they wanted to drop, drop all those shingles off in our dumpster. So we turned them away. Yeah, you can't compact shingles. That's just solid weight and space, and then yeah. and the difference is if it's a if it's a private residence, they can bring their shingles. Yeah. In. That's yeah, that's you, that's, a, that's good. It's these you know roofing companies and stuff that's doing that. They're trying to dump their stuff here. Yeah, if you've got a private contractor remodeling a bathroom or a house, they need to factor into their cost a dumpster. But now, if you're weekend warrior knocking out your own bathroom, you bring it on down. We'll take it because it's not going to fill up the dumpster like you know. And I've talked to a couple of the larger businesses, and they they understand. Yeah, well, I've talked to all of them, but the, the big ones. Yeah, so I mean, it's a lot of these. I don't want to see our government subsidizing the trash bill of businesses when that should be in their business model. So. Anything else? Uh, no, I'm just going to say that because I'll be posting signs up tomorrow that will say no commercial dumping, no. Uh, Construction demolition debris. So that's just more of a, right. a heads up. So. And that's all I have, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Jefferson. Let's move along to Centerville Church Road. Uh, Leroy, you got that? Uh, yep. Would you like to take that in? That's the one you presented uh, last month. Last month yeah. Yep, last yeah. month. That's the one you presented last month. So uh, they brought. Uh... I've got some dates. I don't know who all brought them, but just as long as we've had. Have we advertised it? To, to take it in? Yeah. Like, we just need to give notice to the people in that area that might be affected. That was the whole point of uh, kind of putting it to this month. Hmm. So, that hasn't been done, so we still got to do that? It just gives people a chance. If, if it affects them, they can show up and say, hey, this affects me or whatever. I thought that was all it should have already been done. But um, in order to have a vote, you just got to make it aware that you're going to have a vote on so whether you're taking it in or you're putting it out. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll get that next month. Road crew, get them out there to post that. They've already measured it, so they need to go post it. So we'll we'll get on that and have them go post that it, too. We, I, and I know there's a few other roads here. It's probably just easier. Just you know, you could just do like you know one notice, and these are the roads that we're looking to do I this. I think those other roads were once in the system. Mm -hmm. and okay. They yeah. just dropped off. For they just dropped here. off for some, some reason. reason. They've been in the system forever, and all of a sudden they disappeared yeah, they out of the. Signs and everything. Yeah. yeah. Still got road signs like some of the ones he's getting. Ready to well, if they were never taken out, then they're still in. They just. Yeah, they're still well. Yeah, they're still in our system here locally, but the state, whoever did this, state dropped them out, yeah, and, it's dropped off the state and it's dropped off state map. And you would like to hear when we take a road in or we take a road out, then it goes over, and then she takes it, lets nine one one know, and then we send it to Gateway Ad, and then Gateway Ad puts it into the state system or takes it out of the state system. But it has to start over there. And so for the last four years, we've got a number of roads that has been taken out, and I can't even go back to the physical report and find out where they were taken in or out. Seems like it was probably done a little bit uh, discretionary without a vote in the physical court, which isn't legal. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if they were in and they were never voted out, then, I mean, they're still in. If you want to ratify that, you can, but um, you don't have to advertise those. All right. So then they go into the. This thing keeps going off. Bernie Adams. Uh, yep. Linda. Linda looked, dug, searched, and couldn't find anything where it was taken out. Uh, 
no, so, no so I just need to, I don't know, do we need a motion for that? To get I don't think you do, but if you want to, it wouldn't hurt to, for everybody to ratify it. I mean, At least it would be in the record for, minutes, and put yeah. it in the minutes and it's there. And we got something we can go back to and say it's in there. And that way then she can go back and go through the process and get it back into the state system. It's still on our papers over there. Yeah, I don't understand. Ernie didn't I, I, either. I don't, I don't understand that either. Well, same way with uh, Lori Cantor. Lori Cantor wrote the same way. Yeah, which uh, he's getting ready to discuss. So, but right now, if we get a motion to do that, then we uh, to bring both these. Both these are the only two roads we're doing it in. So let's yeah. if we can get a motion because it, the Roy Cantrell is the same situation yours is in. Yeah, it's, it's got the sign up, everything. It's got where it goes the road, county road. Yeah. So, so what we need to make a motion. I, as I said, it doesn't. Everybody can say all that they want to. If if we can find a place where it was put in, but we can't find a place where it was taken out. There's nothing we actually need to do. It doesn't matter what we say. That's still a county road. Uh, but in the interest of clarification of the county's intent, it wouldn't be a bad idea. So can Donnie or I either one make the motion since we're both on these two? Yeah. One, Does it matter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, put Ernie Adams Road and Roy Cantor Road back into the Moore County Road System. I'll second it. We have a motion on the floor. It's been properly second to put Roy Cantrell Road and Ernie Adams Road uh, back into the road system. Is there any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Amen to that. Bicentennial celebration. Uh, for the bicentennial celebration, we talked about uh, spending up to $500 and uh, County ended up, we spent, the, the city put in, they paid for the band and everything else. County ended up buying the uh, the, the little seals that they wanted for handouts. So uh, that came to $300 for, from a local vendor. And that was our contribution to it. And so uh, uh, a motion to approve the expending of the $300 for the bicentennial celebration. Anybody want one? Oh, you already gave one? Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve to spend $300 for bicentennial celebration. One second. Motion on the floor, properly second to approve uh, spending $300 for the bicentennial celebration. Uh, questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Approval to use the Elon Financial Credit Card on Digital Ocean's website, Thoroughbred Diesel, and uh, and MorePartsLand.com. Sheena, you got this? I guess this, of course, we come to you, uh, to the court anytime that uh, we need uh, to make purchases with our credit card. We want to, of course, have the court's approval uh, before we uh, mm -hmm. make any of those purchases. Uh, the three that we would like uh, approval for is the uh, Oceans digital website. That will be used for a monthly charge for our point of sale system that uh, Tommy had talked to you about that's going to go in up at the transfer station and the wellness center. And the uh, next one is the uh, Thoroughbred Diesel. That's an online um, website, and the road department needs to buy uh, diesel related parts from. Um, from them and um, the next one is salt spreader parts from mowerpartsland.com and uh, we just need to uh, have permission to use the credit card to make purchases on those three uh, websites are we ready i'll entertain a motion to approve the use of the uh, elon financial credit card on digital oceans website thoroughbred diesel and mowerpartsland.com And of course, we will always bring uh, the Elon Financial Credit Card uh, statement for review every meeting. I make a motion that we, we give approval for the, to use the credit card for those parts from those companies. I'll second. 
Motion on the floor, property second, to approve the use of the Elon Financial Credit Card on DigitalOcean's website, Thoroughbred Diesel, and morepartsland.com. Any questions, discussion? All in favor? Uh, uh, opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Sheena, you got the uh, review of WEX and uh, Elon building statements? Uh, yes. Uh, we have uh, included those as an attachment. Uh, the first one is the uh, WEX fuel activity report. Uh, we've included uh, that one for you all to review there. And also, we have attached uh, the second one there. It's the Elon statement. And uh, those are for you all to uh, review and to ratify for the prior period expenditures for the WEX and Elon Financial Services invoices. I'll make a motion to ratify a prior period expenditures for Wix and Elon. I'll second. Well, motion on the floor has been properly seconded to ratify a prior period expenditures for the Wex and Elon Financial Services. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor? Uh, uh, opposed? Motion carries. All right, ratify uh, paid vendor claims. Make a motion to uh, ratify paid vendor claims. I'll second. Motion on the floor, property second to ratify paid vendor claims. Questions, discussion? All in favor? Uh, uh, opposed? Motion carries. Next up, uh, approve unpaid vendor claims.
make a motion to pay the unpaid employee claims. I'll second. Motion on the floor, properly second. Uh, motion to approve payment of the unpaid vendor claims. Questions or discussion? All in favor? Uh, Opposed? Motion carries. All right, now we need to go into closed session. And that Motion. We have a motion on the floor, property safe to go into closed session. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Uh,